so I've actually got an eye beacon attached to my cat. Ruby is alive, Ruby's not going in. Oh, I want to dream for developer happiness. So my name is Max. Uh, I work for Get. Okay, I'm lift this up a bit. I work for Get right here in Tel Aviv. Uh, I'm going to talk about a cool little project we did, which uses Opal, which Ben made fun of uh, in the morning today. <laughs> no, no, all good. Uh, all right. So first, some background. So uh, the company I work for recently decided to drop a couple of letters from its name. So it used to be called Get Taxi. I think it would be easy enough to drop the letters, but in the R&D department, this caused some problems because uh, so previously, Get Taxi did on-demand taxi rides where the user calls for a taxi, uh, and the taxi comes. And now, uh, as Get, we do much more than that. We do uh, all sorts of services that we provide on-demand, so flowers, pizza, whatever, whatever it is. So, uh, among other things, it's meant that the pricing for for the orders has become a lot more complicated in terms of the business rules that we do. Uh, so this is just some background. So now the way generally things work is that the customer has an app installed. He clicks to order something, yeah, let's say a taxi right? to keep things simple. This goes to the server and then the server uh, finds a supplier who accepts the order and then the supplier brings whatever it is he's supposed to bring and all is well. Now, how, is, uh, how do we actually determine the price of the order? So, there's a nice library, it's called the pricing calculator, which determines the price. All is good. So normally the application polls or gets pushed with the, with the pricing data, and somehow it knows what the pricing data is. However, sometimes the application finds itself in a situation when there is no network, because the phone doesn't have network. And it still needs to know what the price is, especially if it's, a, for example, a cash taxi ride, and the driver actually needs to charge the passenger sitting in the cab. Uh, this amount. So it needs to know what the price is, but there's no connection to the server, so what to do? So the application also needs to have the pricing calculator library somehow running in there. Now, initially we tried to do, back when we only had the uh, Android for the application, we actually tried to port the code from, from our server code to the application code and then support it into different versions. However, now we also have iOS, and it's just very difficult to manage this complicated business rules which you have to keep porting to other languages. So ideally, what do we want to have? We want to have isomorphic code. Dun, da, da, da. So what is isomorphic code? So isomorphic code is code that runs on both the server and the client. So you write it once, and it runs everywhere, like magic. So the term itself comes from Node.js. Uh, in Node.js, it's easy to have, in Node.js web development, it's very easy to have isomorphic code because there you have JavaScript on the server and then JavaScript on the client, which is the browser. However, on our side, we didn't want to write JavaScript code because we love Ruby and we wanted to write and maintain Ruby code. So in the server we had Ruby code, but nothing beats running JavaScript like as a portable uh, code on the clients. Because yeah, there are ways to run Ruby on, in, in different environments, but basically it's a lot easier to run JavaScript. So what do we do to fill this gap? Opal. So Opal is, as Ben has mentioned, is a Ruby to JavaScript source to source compiler. Basically it's kind of like coffee script in some ways, or at least in the ways that it kind of positions itself. It allows you who is doing web development to write your client code in something other than JavaScript, because writing JavaScript is not so pleasant. So you could run coffee script, or you could write Ruby, and then use Opal to, to compile it. Now we're using it a little differently, as I said, to do this isomorphic code thing. So, okay, so how does this work? The development flow. So development flow is that we move this library to a jam called the pricing calculator jam. All right, so what do we do? We write Ruby code, and we write Ruby specs. So far, so good. Then we run the Ruby specs on the Ruby code. Then we use Opal to compile the Ruby code into JavaScript code. Then we use Opal to compile Ruby specs into JavaScript specs, because Ruby specs are also Ruby. Then we run those JavaScript specs on the compiled JavaScript code, and finally we do minifying to, uh, to produce the minified JavaScript code. Now, this seems like a lot, but this runs to guard, which is a great jam, so you basically don't have to do anything. You just run your, write, write your Ruby code, change it, and everything runs. Now, when we're deploying this, 
to stop responding for some reason. Okay. Now, what, what happens actually in production? So in production, this gem ships as part of a, uh, as an app server container, which is Rails, which just exposes some API endpoints. So a gem sits inside of the, of the container, and here is the client. So one of the API endpoints is that the client loads the, the JavaScript code in the beginning of a session into a JavaScript runtime, and it has the JavaScript code sitting there. And then it has, there is another endpoint, which, uh, which is the regular server-side fetching of, of the server calculation. So the first one is really used as a fallback normally. Like the server the calculation is the authority, and the other one is really more of a fallback in case the server is not available. Okay, so here I'm going to skip a couple of screens. Dun, dun, dun. And lessons learned, quickly. So solutions running in production, as hard as to believe for about for about half a year, really quickly. So the Opal JS code is reliable, but there are some downsides. Uh, the JavaScript library is heavy. It stresses the client when you load into the JavaScript container. Debugging is tough, like debugging exceptions from minified JavaScript code. Uh, and there are limitations on the Ruby that you can write, basically. It's, it cannot have any gem dependencies. Like You need to keep it very, very, very lean. That's it. So this is available in slide share.